Welcome to the Wind River 2 introductory training course. My name is Dan Murphy and I work in the field service department at Teradyne Audi Instruments where I respond to customer emails and phone calls regarding Teradyne Audi Instruments products. I have been with the company for 10 years. Let us look at the big picture. Wind River 2 is TRDI software that is used to collect data from an ADCP, display it and produce a report. It can collect from any one of our ADCPs. On the top left hand corner of the screen is a river ray. Next down is a stream pro. The stream pro is used in shallow water up to 6 meters deep. Both of these are using a Bluetooth connection as the mechanism to transfer the data in real time to the laptop that is running Wind River 2. The river ray can also have a serial connection. These connections allow Wind River 2 to configure and control the ADCP as well as collect the data. Next down is a Rio Grande. The Rio Grande uses a serial connection to communicate with the laptop. Instead of using this cable, some people have been added, excuse me, have added a set of radios that allow for greater distances and more flexibility than using a cable. In recent times, some people have been using a Bluetooth connection in lieu of the radios. Although the Bluetooth connection does not have the same range as the radios, it is an order of magnitude less expensive. The typical range of a Bluetooth connection is in the order of 100 meters line of sight. A radio connection can be in the order of kilometers. Further down on the left side is a GPS. This can communicate with Wind River 2 using either a serial or Bluetooth connection. The River Ray GPS typically uses a direct connection to the River Ray. However, it could also use a Bluetooth connection. In the case of a Stream Pro, it will always use a Bluetooth connection. For the Rio Grande, if it is in a float, the GPS messages will typically come back to the laptop over a radio connection. This radio connection will handle multiplexing both of the GPS messages and the ACP data. Care needs to be taken to not exceed the data throughput of the modem connection. A depth sounder will be a serial connection as well as an external hitting device, though it might be otherwise. The two Bluetooth connections are shown. The one at the bottom is for the ADCP ensemble data and the one at the top is for the GPS data. A separate Bluetooth connection is needed for the GPS to ensure that there is no latency in the GPS data. A SENA SD1000U has been found to work well for all GPS connections. See the Win number 2 documentation regarding setting the low latency on the SENA adapter. For the ensemble data, any Bluetooth device with an ample range will be sufficient. Open the Toshiba Bluetooth Manager. Be sure to click the icon shown in the red arrow, not the Windows Manager shown by the black arrow. Click New Connection. The program will find all the Bluetooth devices in the neighborhood. When you see the Stream Pro or the River Ray appear, double click on the icon. In a moment, right click on the icon to enable the connection. Notice the green connected symbol just below the icon. You may have a Blue Soleil UD100, in which case you must use the Blue Soleil Manager. The Microsoft Manager as well as the Toshiba and Blue Soleil are covered in detail in the latest Wind River 2 User's Guide. A separate Bluetooth connection is needed for the GPS to ensure that there is no latency in the GPS data. A SENA SD1000U has been found to work well for the GPS connection. The SD1000U uses the Pirani Wind software for its configuration. When you plug in the SD1000U to your laptop, observe which new serial port appears. Come for in this example. Now open the Pirani Wind software, select the serial port and border it. If your selection is wrong, the window will reappear. Click Connection Out and click Search. Select your device and click Connect. 
In a moment, you will see that your connection was successful. Remember to close the Perani Win software and use the same COM port number to run either BBTalk or Win River 2. In the case of the Riveray, the GPS is connected directly into the Riveray via the black cable shown in the picture. Within the Riveray, the GPS messages are incorporated into the PD0 Ensemble data stream and sent over a single Bluetooth connection back to the laptop. Connecting a GPS directly to a Riveray. Let's look at some troubleshooting. First, use the Riveray firmware version 44.16, which came out in September of 2013. Then, use the SF command to set the GPS baud rate. And finally, use SF2 to view the GPS text data, as we'll see in a moment. In this example here, we have good data. You can see the highlighted SF8 command, which sets the baud rate and then the SF2 command, which turns the diagnostics on. If you look down further on the screen, you'll see the highlighted in yellow dollar GP GGA message, followed by the latitude and longitude, and finally by the star 40, which is the checksum at the end. This is an example of a good GP GGA message. Just below it, you can see a good VTG message and so on. In this example here, you can see we still turned on the SF2 command and so the diagnostics were enabled. However, you will now see that the following data is all garbage and this is because of the wrong baud rate. Again, we did an SF2 and the diagnostics are enabled, however, there is no data. This can be because the GPS is not turned on, or is not outputting the messages for some reason, or there's a connection issue between the GPS and the wiring harness in the float, or the wiring harness in the float is incorrect. Now we will look at connecting your ADCP using a serial adapter. We have found that the EasySync is a very good adapter, especially on Windows 7 laptops. You can use it to connect your Workhorse Rio Grande or Channel Master to your laptop. Driver installation instructions are included with the device. And the bottom of the page you can see the web address. Now we're going to use BBTalk to check the serial adapter. If you have any communication issue, it is much easier to troubleshoot using BBTalk than WinRiver 2 or WinH ADCP. If you don't know for sure that the serial adapter works, place a short circuit between pins number 2 and 3 on the 9-pin connector. Note that in this orientation, there are 5 pins in the top row and four pins on the lower row of pins. Now whatever you type should be echoed back exactly as you typed it. Radio modems. The workhorse Rio Grande baud rate and the work Winover 2 baud rate will have to be the same as the modem baud rate. The modem baud rate typically cannot be changed in the field. The workhorse rear grand baud rate will need to be set using the 5 millimeter, excuse me, 5 meter TRDI cable and BB talk. If the modems have been working and now there is no Wind River 2 data, the quickest thing to do is to use BB talk to communicate with the workhorse rear grand. Repower the rear grand. Did you see the banner? If not, you will see or check at least that the transmit light on the remote and the receive light on the shore modems are flashing. If not, did you hear the Rio Grande beeping every time you powered it up? If you see the banner, this means that all the borders are correct. Try typing any command. If you do not see the characters being echoed back, then there's a modem or wiring issue 
assuming your serial adapter is good. To troubleshoot further, replace the modems with the 5 meter TRDI cable. If all works well, then there's an issue with the modems or the wiring harness in the float. The modems are a matched pair and cannot be individually interchanged with other SL modems you may have in your possession. A separate seal port is required for the depth sounder. Set the border on the port. In window number 2, select the processing tab in the field configuration and select depth sounder. The next course is data collection in Win River 2. This course will cover collecting EDCP data, GPS, and depth sounder data. The focus will be on the EDCP, as in previous courses we've covered GPS and the depth sounder. Further courses are Win River 2 ASCII out. This course will cover selecting items of interest and outputting the data in an ASCII format. Next, we got the compass calibration. This course will cover using Win River 2 to calibrate a StreamPro, Rivere, or Workhorse. The focus will be on the new ISM compasses that are used in the StreamPro and Rivere. Data quality. This course will cover intensities, correlations, air velocity, and compass calibration results. And finally, moving bed test. This course will cover the moving bed test portion of Win River 2. This will include the stationary moving bed test and the loop method. And finally, we will have a course showing the use of Win River 2 on the tablet. This course will cover running Win River 2 on an Acer W5 tablet using the internal Bluetooth connection to a River A or Stream Pro. And thank you very much.